So I bought a portable PlayStation 5 and in this video, we'll unbox it, we'll set it up and we'll test it out. So looking at the box, there's a few things that stand out right away. So it is an officially licensed PlayStation product, which would make sense considering how similar it looks to a DualSense controller. The main difference to point out is on the DualSense controller, the analog stick is on the bottom left, and on this controller, it's in the top left. Now, the second thing to point out is the fact that this product is made for the iPhone. Now, they are coming out with an Android version soon. I'll link both of them down below to Amazon, and this product costs about $100. And last but not least, the third thing that stands out to me on the box is the fact that this can play pretty much any game. As you can see, it's compatible with PlayStation, Xbox, Apple Arcade, and pretty much any game on your phone. So let's go ahead and open up this bad boy and see what's inside. So it's a nice little unboxing experience. You pull off the sleeve, open up the top, and ooh, there it is. That looks even better in person. I mean, even comparing them side by side, these buttons even have the glow of the official DualSense controller. But the second thing you see when you open up this box is a few foam pads up here to keep it in place, and then also this little box with an adapter. So when we slide this out, it's actually an adapter you'll need if you have an iPhone 13 Pro or a Pro Max. So that's it up top. Let's get back down to the bottom. So we have a little pamphlet here that says snap in, game on, and it even gives you some instructions on the back. So I just wanted to pause real quick and tell you guys that I am giving away a PS5. All you gotta do is use the link down below to sign up for whatnot, then you gotta follow me or whatnot, and then you have to be present in the live stream when I give away the PS5 and you'll be entered to win for free. And if you don't know what whatnot is, it's basically an app where I can live stream and sell video games at the same time. So let me show you the process right now. So all you gotta do is click on the whatnot link down below in the description. I'm using an old video as an example, but once you click on the link, it'll say Jacob R gave you $10 on whatnot credit. You'll click claim your credit and then you will sign up. Once you've signed up, you'll go to the WhatNot app. Once the app opens up, click on the gift icon up at the top and you should see your $10 in credits. If you don't, send me a message so I can get it fixed. Then you go to the search icon, type in Jacob R, then click on users. And you'll see my name at the top, click on that and then click follow and then go down below and bookmark all my shows so you know when I go live and then especially bookmark the PS5 giveaway show. And if you go in here, you can actually go to my store and go ahead and go to buy it now. And I'll have some goodies down there that you can use your $10 credit on. Uh, so make sure not to miss out. And of course, what we've all been waiting for, the Backbone controller itself. And man, this is very nice. Just putting the controller in my hands, the feel of it actually feels very similar to a DualSense. Just the, the plastic material that's been used and then the buttons are actually more clicky. The joysticks feel very similar, just smaller, and it, it just looks stylish. Now putting that to the side for a second, we have one more thing down below our little mold right there so this is the manual that absolutely nobody will read and it's not even a manual it's a safety guide so yeah let's put that back now let's go ahead and take a closer look at this backbone controller so first thing you notice is that the analog stick is the top left instead of bottom left which i already mentioned but uh, just something to point out and the d-pad feels nice also has that crisp little glow to it we have a couple buttons down here we have the triple dot I'm not sure what that does we have this little screenshot button we have what looks to be like a library button and then our start button. Then moving up, we have our analog sticks, which feel pretty nice. They're smaller than the DualSense, but uh, that's expected on a small product like this. And then of course our X, O, triangle, and square, all nice and clicky, and they have that cool little glow to them. So looking at the top here, we have our L1, L2, R1, R2, and L2 and R2 actually have that classic analog feel to them where they have a little bit of give to them instead of just a, a clicky button like L1 and R1. And then flipping over to the back, nothing special, uh, just your classic white and black contrast. You got eight screws in case you want to open it up. And if you slide it out, you got this cool PlayStation logo and that slide out function is very smooth. And then flipping down to the bottom, we have a couple more things to point out. We have a USB-C port and we also have a headphone jack. Now let's go ahead and put a phone in. So first we take the piece that is for your iPhone 13 and 13 Pro and it just slides in right here, kind of clamps around that piece, then you slide it all the way to the left. And I have a 13 Pro, which is why I put that insert in there. Uh, so the instruction is said to put it in the left side and then extend the right side. And then we will plug it into the port. And it appears the reason you want to use this right here is so that the three cameras don't bump up against this right here. Um, so it does make it a little bit crooked, but you actually cannot tell from the front. So once I unlocked my iPhone, it actually booted straight into the Backbone app, which I'll put a little link down below if you wanna check it out. Uh, basically it's just an app called Backbone. And it says, welcome to Backbone. Press X to continue. Press X and we can sign in with Apple or Google. So once you do that sign in stuff, you can pick an emoji for your profile. So let's go ahead and pick something interesting. I kind of like this emoji right here. So let's do that. And then next you pick your display name. And once you have your display name, it says, congrats. Your Backbone comes with a free trial of Backbone Plus and exclusive perks. No idea what that entails, but I guess we'll find out. So yep, here we find out Backbone Plus has party up and play with friends. It has capture, edit, and share gameplay, free games. All games in one place and exclusive product deals. So we finished setup and it actually has this cool home screen built in where you can go to your Xbox remote play, PS app, 
and other games that are actually built into the home screen. So let's just check out a few things. So go up here, you can check out uh, your friends and stuff, people you may know. We can search for games. We can check our notifications. We can check our messages from other people and we can also check our rewards. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're here to play PlayStation. So let's click on the PS app and see what it does for us. So it automatically connects up the controller and it tells us to open PS Remote Play app. So let's go ahead and do that. So it opens the PS Remote Play app and if you haven't signed into PSN, you'll need to do that. So once you sign in, it'll ask you if you wanna connect up to your PS4 or your PS5. And if you're on the same network as your console, it'll actually connect up automatically. So I'm on the same network as my PS5 right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on PS5. And before connecting to your PS5, you need to enable remote play. So let's go ahead and do that on our PS5. So the process of enabling remote play on your PS5 is actually very simple. I just booted up my PS5. We're gonna scroll up to the settings icon, click on that, scroll down to system, click on that. And you wanna scroll down to remote play, click on that and make sure this enable remote play is pushed to the right. So we have it on now. And if for some reason you enable remote play and you can't connect automatically on the same network, go to link device, you can find a number and you can manually put that in on the screen and connect up. So now that you've verified that your PS5 has remote play turned on, we'll go ahead and proceed here. Connect to PS5, and it's gonna search for your connections via the internet. So we are now connected up to the PS5, and we officially have our portable PS5. And at first glance, the lag is actually not bad at all. That's one thing that you always expect to have on a, uh, a remote play device, is it some input lag, and it does have a little bit, but it's honestly not bad. Let's go ahead and boot up Tony, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, uh, because this one is pretty critical that you don't have too much lag. So let's just open up a skate tour and film some gameplay. All right guys, you saw some gameplay there, and to be honest, I'm pretty impressed. So I've been playing three games so far, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, Evil Dead, and NBA Playground. So I, I tried to do a few different varieties of games. So Tony Hawk's Pro Skater requires some pretty precise timing to time tricks and everything. And at first, you can tell there's lag, but once your fingers and brain gets used to it, honestly, it just disappears. Like the lag is so minimal that it's, it's not really an issue. And to my knowledge, Evil Dead is a little bit less strenuous. I haven't played Evil Dead all that much, more than like an hour or two so far, but like it doesn't require precise movements. So those few milliseconds didn't matter too much. NBA Playgrounds, I wanted to try out a sports game to try the timing on shooting. And at first you can feel the lag like a little bit, but then, like I said, your brain, your fingers get used to it. And it honestly was not an issue. Now, if you're playing Call of Duty competitively, then yeah, those milliseconds are gonna matter. But for 99% of people that are playing out there for fun, uh, it, you know, I don't think this little bit of lag is gonna affect you. Let me just show you. So as soon as you press right, I mean, you can see a little bit of lag there when I press and when it goes to the side, but it's, it's so minimal that honestly, you probably cannot tell on camera. So the one caveat here is I'm on the same network as my PS5 right now, so it's kind of an optimal uh, experience. So I'm gonna try this on my T-Mobile network, uh, you know, a different network than my PS5 and see how it plays. So I ran a speed test in my backyard. Yeah, not great. Now, if you can get on a 5G ultra wideband network like on Verizon, you theoretically should be almost as good as being on your home network. And of course, as you can see, as I'm playing Tony Hawk on my mobile network, it's lagging and buffering a lot at first. It does get a little bit better, but honestly, it's too much to be fun on this game specifically. I think you either need to have a really solid mobile data connection or you should just play games that don't require precise timing. So you can see the difference between using remote play on your home network versus on a mobile network. And uh, clearly the home network is better, but in case you do want to use mobile data, let me just show you how to do that. So you go to settings, mobile data, make sure this is turned on. And you can, that means you can use mobile data and you can actually change your video quality as well. Um, if I'm at home, I'll probably change this to best, but you know, you probably need low if you're on mobile data. So regardless of your network, I would have to recommend this controller. I mean, it's pretty dang cool. I love the aesthetic and it functionality wise, it works great. And one thing I did not point out earlier is this lightning port down here can actually charge your iPhone while you are plugged into the controller since the controller is taking up your lightning port. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this controller and if you're going to buy one. And thanks for watching, guys.